Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadratic equations and other word problems. Actually a couple of different scenarios, so it's going to be a couple of different questions. We have to solve for all the integers in each of these cases here. So the first case, sum of the squares of three consecutive integers is 245, and part B, the sum of squares of three consecutive even integers is 116. The sum of squares of three consecutive odd integers is 683. The product of two consecutive integers is 462. And then part E, the product of two consecutive odd integers is 255. So all of these, they're similar, but they have some differences. And I wanted to bring in these different cases. So when a question like this does arise, you're comfortable in adjusting to whatever scenario is presented to you. So Let's uh, let's start off with the first two. I'm going to erase these here just to give myself some room. I'll bring them back later on once we get to them. So in part A, we're told the sum of the squares of three consecutive integers is 245. Now, when we're dealing with consecutive integers, that would, for example, be like 2, 3, and 4, right? Integers that are just right after the other. And we're solving for those integers. So what we can do is we can represent the first integer as x. The next integer is then going to be x plus 1. And then the next integer, because we're dealing with three of them, is going to be x plus 2. So that's how you can represent three consecutive integers in terms of variables. Right? And we're told that the sum of the squares of these is going to be 245, meaning that if we take each of these and we square them, right, like this, and then sum them up, the sum of these is going to be 245. And so now notice at this point, we end up having an equation with just one variable to solve. So we can expand everything. This would be x squared. If you take x plus 1 times x plus 1, that would give you x squared plus 2x plus 1 after you FOIL everything out, collect all the like terms. x plus 2 times x plus 2, that would give us x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then we have 245 like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring everything over to the left side and then simplify the like terms. So here we'll have 3x squared we'll have 2x plus 4x, which would give us 6x. And then notice here we have plus 1 plus 4, which is 5. But when we bring the 245 over, 5 minus 245 would give us negative 240 like that. And that is equaling 0. And now notice we have a quadratic equation to solve. So different ways to potentially solve this. You could throw everything in the quadratic formula if you want. Because we're solving for integers here, we know that the solution for x should be an integer, meaning that this should factor smoothly. Notice how we could take out a 3 initially. So we'll have x squared plus 2x minus 80 like that. And then that's going to equal 0. And then this over here actually factors into x plus 10 and then x minus 8 like that. Right, this bracket factors into these two brackets. And so, basically, when does x plus 10 equal 0? When does x minus 8 equal 0? It's going to happen when x is negative 10. And this is going to happen when x is 8. And so, notice there's actually two sets of solutions in this case. Because we can have negative integers. Sometimes the question will specify solve for positive integers or maybe solve for negative integers, usually it's going to be positive. Here they didn't specify it, so we actually have to account for both cases. So the two cases are either x is 8, and that means x plus 1 would be 9, and then x plus 2 would be 10, right? So those can be the three consecutive integers, but x can also be negative 10, and then adding 1 to negative 10 would be negative 9, adding 2 to negative 10 would give us negative 8. It's basically the same set, just the opposite sign. The reason why it works is because we're uh, summing up the squares, and then whenever we square it, whether it's a positive or a negative, 
it's going to turn into a positive. So we can test this. So we can go like plus or minus, doesn't matter which one, 8 squared plus plus or minus 9, could be positive 9, negative 9 squared, plus plus or minus 10 squared. We'll notice here we'll get positive 64, whether, again, it's positive or negative inside the bracket. Once we square it, it's going to end up being positive. Then we'll have plus 81 plus 100. So notice these here would give us uh, 145 plus 100 would give us 245 as expected right there. So you could always check your answer as well with, uh, with these. So those are the two sets of uh, integers that work and they are consecutive integers as well. Right, so that's how you solve these kinds of questions. Now, with part B, it's similar, but there is one key difference. Now we're gonna be working with consecutive even integers and the sum of those squares is gonna be 116. So if we're working with consecutive even integers, an example of that would be like four, six, and eight, for example. And now notice if we let x be that smallest integer, well, notice that the next integer, it's not going to be x plus 1, it's going to be x plus 2. And then this one is going to be x plus 4, right? Because consecutive even integers, also consecutive odd integers, for example, like 5, 7, 9, they always have a distance of 2 between them. So if you're working with consecutive even integers or consecutive odd integers, this is how you set it up. You actually set it up the same way, whether they're even or odd. Uh, just be careful not to make a mistake here. Sometimes students will go, okay, if we're working with consecutive odd integers, they'll go x and then x plus one. They think that this number should be odd, okay? But it's actually just set up the same way. It would still be x plus two, x plus four, because even with consecutive odd integers, the distance or the difference between each one is going to be two. So you set it up this way, whether you're working with consecutive even or odd integers. And so then what we do is we square all of these and then when we sum them up, so we'll have x squared plus x plus two squared plus x plus four squared, the sum of those has to be 116. So we'll have x squared plus x squared plus four x plus four. When we expand this, when we expand this, we'll end up with that like this, and so x squared plus x squared plus x squared, 3x squared, 4x plus 8x, 12x, uh, 20, bring this over, uh, 20 minus 116 would give us negative 96, like that, and that's gonna equal zero. Again, because we're solving for, um, for x and it's gonna be an integer, well, hopefully, because that's what we're expecting to get, you can factor this smoothly probably. And so factoring it, we could take out a three initially from everything. And then 96 divided by three would give us what? 32, like that. And then this bracket factors into x plus eight, x minus four, and that's gonna equal zero like that. So the two solutions we get is either x equals negative eight or x is equal to four. Again, two sets of solutions because when we square the values, they're gonna end up being positive. So the actual consecutive even integers can also be negative. So the two sets here would be either negative eight, negative eight plus two would give us negative six, negative eight plus four would give us negative four, so that's one set. And then the other set would be four, six, and eight, like that, right? Again, it's the same um, integers, just different signs, right? And so when we square them, they would end up being positive. So notice four squared or negative four squared would give us 16, six squared, 36, eight squared, 64. And when we add these up, notice we do get indeed that value of 116. Moving on to part C. So the sum of squares of three consecutive odd integers is 683. So as I mentioned, whether you're working with consecutive even integers or odd integers, you represent it the same way like this, right? Because they have a difference of two between them. So same thing, we take these 
we are going to add them up. I could have even kept written down what I had before for this question because that left side is actually going to be the exact same. And then the sum of those squares is going to be 683. And so we would end up with x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 plus x squared plus 8x plus 16 is going to be 683. And then we'll have 3x squared uh, plus 12x, right? So we got this, 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 20, bring this over, 20 minus 683 would give us negative 6. 63 and that's going to equal zero like that and then we could factor so 3x squared plus 4x and then 663 divided by 3 would give us what uh 200 and um 21 like that it's going to equal zero okay and then this over here actually factors into x plus 17, x minus 13. That's gonna equal zero, right? 17 times negative 13 would give us negative 221, and then 17x minus 13x would give us positive 4x. So from here, x can either be negative 17 or x can be positive 13. So again, two sets of solutions here, uh, we could have 13, 15, or 17, or we can have negative 17, uh, negative 15, negative 13. And then when we square these, remember it will always be positive. Then when we sum them up, it should be 683. 13 squared is 169, 15 squared is 225, 17 squared is 289. And when you add these up, you'll get 683. Right, so that's the two sets of solutions for part C. Then in part D, here's where it gets a little bit different because we're not going to be summing squares anymore. It says the product of two consecutive integers is 462. So if we have x and x plus 1, because now we're just working with consecutive integers, not consecutive odd or even integers. So it's two of those. So it's x, x plus 1. The product of these is going to equal 462. So we'll have x squared plus x equals 462. Uh, bring this over, x squared plus x minus 462 is going to equal 0 like that. And then this will actually factor into x plus 21, or uh, sorry, x plus 22, x minus 21 like that. Okay, so we got two solutions here, either x equals negative 22 or x is equal to positive 21 like that. So we could have either 21 and 22, right, if x is 21, or we could have negative 22 and uh, negative 22, if negative 22 is x, x plus 1, negative 22 plus 1 gives us negative 21. And notice that if we multiply these two, we end up with positive 462. If we multiply these two, we also end up with positive 462. Okay, so either of those solutions right there work out. And then moving on to part E, so we're told the product of two consecutive odd integers is 255. So because we're working with consecutive odd integers, x, x plus 2, right? Because if it's going to be two consecutive odd integers, they have a difference of 2 between them. Then we're told the product of those, right, this times that is 255. So when we expand everything, x squared plus 2x, bring the 255 over, we end up with that right there. This factors smoothly into x plus 17x minus 15, like that. So we could have either x equaling negative 17 or x equaling positive 15. So again, two sets of solutions. If x is 15, then the next integer, x plus 2, is going to be 17. So there's one set. If x is negative 17, x plus 2 would give us negative 15. There's another set. Negative 17 times negative 15 gives us 255, or 15 times 17 also gives us positive 255. 
All right, so it's about setting up the uh, variables properly. Be careful if they're dealing with consecutive integers or consecutive odd or even integers. The way you set it up is different. And then just setting up an equation and solving.